Here we have a three-dimensional structure from the Understanding Structural Design course that I recently taught with David Bron. This is what looks like a very simple problem, very trivial, except it's not. It can be rather difficult if you've never done 3D structures before. So I encourage everyone to give this problem a try for yourself. Draw on the actual forces, reactions, deflected shape, major minding, minor bending moments, and the shear forces and torsion. You can download this sheet in the comments, comments section down below. Give this a try for yourself and come back to this video when you are done. First of all, we should I should add that we need to add Put some dimensions it doesn't actually matter what dimensions you use so I'm just going to use five meters three meters two meters and ten kilonewtons it does not actually matter what you do it's more the shape that matters okay so what is the predominant action the predominant behavior of the structure we only have one applied force and bear in, bear in mind the orientation of the I-beams and the column, H section. So the predominant behavior will come from this concentrated force onto member CD. And due to the fact that it's coming vertically, and that's the direction of the beam there, it's a major axis bending moment. And as you can probably imagine, it starts from 0 at D, increases to 20, kilonewton meters uh, let's do the units down here so 20 kilonewton meters at C okay so CD is going downwards if we imagine a cantilever at C and D so now we have a reaction of 20 there how does that transmit into BC that is transmitted via a torsion so we have to now jump to the torsion graph here, torsion diagram. And that torsion is going to be equal to the reaction. Twenty kilonewton meters. The torsion doesn't change along the length of BC. The only thing that is causing torsion is uh, member CD acting on it. Okay, so how does the torsion at B transmit into column AB? Well, notice the direction of the H section there, the I section, however you want to call it. That torsion wants to rotate in this plane like that, and therefore that's a minor axis bending along AB. So we need to jump to the minor axis bending moment here. And it starts off at 20, because that's what the applied torque to applied torsion is. So it's 20. And it doesn't change as you go down the leg. See, the lever arm, due to that force there, remains CD apart from A, uh, column AB. So this comes down to tw 20 down there, if I draw that line straight. That's, that remains at 20 down there. Okay, so that gives us actually our first reaction here. This reaction down at A is a 20 kilonewton meter bending moment there. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about the major axis bending along BC then. So from the perspective of BC, you can imagine BC that ten kilonewton force is coming down, even though it's coming it's kind of further into the page at C than this beam, it's still a it's still a concentrated force and the lever arm does change as you go along CB. 
So we need to start our bending moment at zero at C because this will increase like this. And it increases to the length there was three meters. So this goes to 30 kilonewton meters. Okay, big thing to realize is that there is a discontinuity at C along the major axis bending. Okay, and then how does that major axis bending at B transmit into column AB? So that will be, that will also start at 30 there, and then that will remain constant because this lever arm does not change either. This will remain constant as you go down AB. So we have our, we have another reaction force that we can draw in there. That's 30 kilonewton meters. Um, let's do the major shear force then. Let's do this in red. We try to keep forces in red. So this force comes down by 10 kilonewtons. Goes, there's no, there's no extra applied force as you go from D down to C. And similarly, where you can go around the corner at C all the way along to B. That shear force doesn't change. But what's happening at B? That column is clearly supporting point B. That column is providing a 10 kilonewton uh, support vertically at B. So therefore, the there's actually no shear force in the column. That column is providing an axial force. So that's zero all the way along the column. And we have an axial compression force here of 10 kilonewtons here. Okay, and because of that action, we actually get another reaction in A. Let me just move this across. Our reaction, we have a vertical reaction force of 10 kilonewtons remembering to keep the units correct. Okay, we have no further minor axis bending moments because the actual force to, to get any minor, uh, minor axis bending for CD, the force has to travel in that sort of direction. So there's none of that. And similarly for BC, there needs to be force in that direction for minor axis bending, which we don't have. So the minor axis bending for BC and CD is zero the whole way. And now CD and BC, the minor, the minor axis shear force is going to be zero as well. And there's no there's no ax there's no force there. Okay. And this is our full solution. This is how you do a 3D bending moment diagram. If you found that example difficult, or if you have been finding the certificate in structural behavior videos that I've been putting online quite tricky as well do consider joining me and Dr. David Bron at the Understanding Structural Behaviour course that we will be running with the iStruct E. We will be running it over Zoom online due to the global pandemic, but it will be the 1st to 2nd of December this year, so approximately one month from the release of this video. If you are a member of the iStruct E, you get a slightly discounted price, and that applies to student and graduate members as well. Student membership is free, if you don't already know that. So do think about joining this course. We had fantastic feedback from the Understanding Structural Design course that we held the previous month. The design course is a higher level, 
as, as in more complex than the behavior level, which is the uh, entry level one. And like I say, the feedback was fantastic. And we also had people saying that they will join from the design course into the behavior course as well. They found it very helpful. And so thank you to those people who were there. And hopefully we will see you soon. Thank you and see you in the next video.